What is going on guys? We are back with another video today. We're doing another rebuild on Madden 21 and today it's a realistic rebuild of the Denver Broncos. I will say a realistic rebuild but with a fantasy kind of implication. I'm not saying that Rodgers getting traded to the Broncos is the most unrealistic thing ever as far as trading goes. It seems like they are by far the number one team to make that trade. I'm not sure if there was conversations before the draft or not but them passing on Justin Fields is a huge huge question mark to me. Maybe they just didn't want Fields. I don't know what it is, but even if you have the Rodgers talks, even if you're like about to sign the paperwork, I'd almost debate getting Fields and just using him as a trade piece. Honestly, that's not the worst thing in the world, right? I mean, I think Justin Fields automatically, as we've seen with the trade down from the Giants and Bears situation, provides massive value automatically. And in case the Rodgers deal falls through, which if that is the case right now, might be actually true you have that backup plan I don't think Locke's the guy I think Teddy Bridgewater of course is just a guy to to maybe make you competitive if you have the talent around you which the Broncos seem to have that uh, but ultimately my opinion as a Packers fan Rodgers doesn't get traded and he actually believe it or not retires for a season which is insane I don't know where it goes from there but I mean I don't think that's what okay here's here's my actual thing I would say 50% chance he comes back 35% chance he retires and just lives the, the, the high life, I guess. And then a 15% chance he gets traded mainly because of the contractual situation. The Packers are just in a really bad spot money-wise right now, salary cap-wise. As far as the Broncos roster goes, which will have Rodgers on it in a moment, we got to figure out a trade that makes sense in our opinion. Uh, you have Sutton, you have Judy. You've got a lot of talent on the offensive side of the ball. You have an, off an offensive line that has been improving uh, I will say with uh, my boy here, the guy that I've been loving in Madden franchise this season, don't know where he fits on the team. They re-signed Glasgow, Reisner's on a, a rookie deal still, Bowles they actually re-signed, and I think Jawan James is on the squad for at least one more season no matter what. I think the ideal scenario for us would be to play this lineup, obviously put Jawan James in there at right tackle. I think he's still here, i got to check. Uh, and then play it out for a season, lose Juwan James next season, move Reisner to tackle, and then put up, you know, Mutai, uh, you know, one spot up. As far as the defensive side of things go, it is a little strange that they, I'm mean, going to say a little strange that they drafted Patrick Sertain, uh, or Sertan, uh, but, you know, it probably wasn't the biggest need for them, right? I mean, I think the Cowboys definitely got cucked out by teams taking positions they really didn't need, a.k.a. cornerback. I'm not really sure exactly some of the position decisions there, but yeah, the defense, it plays better than the Madden rating suggests, and I am going to put Simmons back to Superstar. I know there's a lot of dev ups here that maybe don't aren't deserved if you want to make that argument. I did give a decent bit of high devs to the Broncos, who have an okay roster, but for Madden, you know, they're not the greatest squad in the world. Miners, I believe his name is, uh, I put him at star because I think he was one of the super underrated players. Well, not underrated, but he was uh, a gem so to speak, for that team, or for this team anyways, so I put him at star as well. So as far as what I think a trade to the Packers would look like, I think this is what I, well, okay, we can't put the extra first. I think Cortland Sutton, even though I don't see Green Bay necessarily valuing their wide receiver position super lowly, but the Packers are in a situation where they don't have a whole lot of wide receivers on the actual roster contractually past this next season. So maybe Sutton's a guy they look to resign. I mean, the money is just rough, but you know, I, I think they would probably answer back with a trade of Sutton. Of course, it might actually just take the first round picks rather than Sutton here just to make the trade, which they should accept. They do not. Really, am I going to have to move positions here for Mr. Rogers? I will say a guard probably makes more sense, but I don't think Reisner... Do you think Reisner would be a part of it? It would be a decent bit. Two first, Reisner, and if you actually believe in Locke, maybe Sutton. Damn, dude, what do I give him? All right, so I lowered Rogers overall a little bit to 90. A uh, first round here, a first round there, Drew Locke and for Rogers. I obviously will be also sending Cortland Sutton, a guy that is kind of like 50-50. He looks really solid, and then he kind of falls off, and I feel like this is a pretty damn uh, good trade for Green Bay here, and I think it's it's pretty fair. I mean, you got to assume with a decent quarterback that Denver becomes, you know, a pretty good team, right? So 
those first round picks, I wouldn't expect to be anywhere near the top five. At best, maybe top 15, just because of the division, perhaps. I'm not 100% sure, because obviously everything's speculation. You really don't know. Injuries happen. You know, whatever. Rodgers falls off. Yeah, you know, he, he struggles to learn the playbook. I don't know, but definitely uh, definitely something in that nature. Obviously going to raise him back up to be a 98 overall is what I wanted to put him at. And there he goes. And then as far as his contract goes, I think there's going to be a lot more guaranteed money in this. So I'm going to add like, let me think. All right, so we restructured Roger's contract to a contract that seems a little bit more fitting for uh, what he seems to want. So we changed his uh, current deal to a four-year deal worth $160 million, with two-thirds of that being guaranteed. Uh, he signed a four-year deal, uh, what was it, back in, Jesus, I don't even remember what year it was. Four-year deal worth $134 million with, uh, was it 79 guaranteed at signing? You know, this is almost the exact same type of deal with a decent bit more guaranteed. And more importantly, he is several years older. This is a lot. You know, I, I'd honestly say he'd maybe even take slightly less than that with Green Bay. But as of right now, it, it seemed like they were kind of hesitant to offer that. So... Maybe that's half the reason why he is so distraught, as the as they would say. But uh, we got the deal done. This is a massive, massive gamble for Denver. And this could be a failed rebuild, but that's the reason I want to do it. Intro's done. We're going to get going. All right, here's the projected starting lineup for your Denver Broncos. Jerry Judy with a, you know, a shaky year one. But with Cortland Sutton gone, even though Tim Patrick has you know, climbed up the ranks. I still think Jerry Judy's your number one projected guy here. Uh, Hamler did have an injury in uh, practice, but hopefully he'll be fine. We're going to assume he's going to be fine. Uh, Melvin Gordon in a contract year with Javante Williams, the high second round draft pick, uh, you know, creeping on his ankles. Obviously, Melvin Gordon needs to have a prove it here and, you know, make it happen right here. And he obviously is going to have a lot of help with Rodgers throwing the ball all around the field. Decent receiving targets. O-line's decent enough. Maybe even debatably better than Green Bay's at this point. It's it's close. It depends on if the guys play up to their talent. You know, Garrett Bowles kind of only just showed up recently enough, and they got him that re-signing. Uh, you know, it, it kind of depends on how the O-line plays. If they play up to their potential, then definitely, but it's a little hard to say. Uh, as far as the defense, you know, once again, Kareem Jackson needs to be replaced. Stearns could be the guy. Probably not, though. Vaughn, I mean, he's not no spring chicken. It's my phrase lately. I don't know why I keep saying it. I haven't said it much in videos, but in my real life, I sa I've said it a few times. 31 years old, 32 in real life, probably. Uh, Alexander Johnson, another guy that's not super young. Baron Browning, hopefully climbing up uh, quick as a rookie. Lots and lots of potential. Maybe a little bit too fast there. Chubb, another guy who may need a contract soon. Uh, and then Simmons... Obviously, uh, got his contract. Totally worth it. Superstar looking like a beast. Fuller, definitely a guy I would love to see get superstar. That would solve a lot of things here. Maybe he even moves back to free safety. Well, not back, but, you know what I mean, back on the defense to free safety. Is team has so many damn corners, and, you know, Patrick Sertan, and, you know, maybe don't want your rookie corner starting anyways, but even if I wanted to, I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's the way, way Rodgers would work, <laughs> right? He would... Yeah, I definitely work with the quarterbacks. That's that's the type of guy he's clearly showing himself to be. As far as season goal goes, I'd expect the team with or without Rodgers to be around an eight-plus win team. So I'm going to go with seven just to be safe. His playoffs aren't the same as nine wins anymore. Uh, we already have re-signings. Didn't they sign Simmons? To be fair, they probably don't have any of the contract stuff uh, because it happened mid-season. I'm going to try to sign this to a realistic deal, which I believe was a four-year 55-60 million dollar deal Bryce Callahan that's a guy we might have to let go at this rate I would love to keep him over Darby but Darby was the guy that got a three years so a little iffy there Tim Patrick may actually be let go as well I didn't realize he was going to be on a contract year which to be fair could be the name instead of Sutton if we're going to have lock it really kind of depends on how the Packers can argue that point or how much Denver actually pushes if there is a trade ever uh, but yeah I mean not the worst resigns real question is how much money do we have and ooh, Maybe we might only be able to afford Kyle and, and Justin Simmons if we want Kyle Fuller, which I do, but at the same time, that's it's a little costly. 
So we didn't get a single breakout offered to us this season, but we did, as you can see, get a freaking playoff berth and it would appear a division championship. And it is, of course, the strangest part is we were much better than 11-5. We went on a four-game losing streak to the Raiders, Chargers, Saints, and Chiefs, which I don't even blame. Very, very, very impressive season. Let's take a look at how Rodgers and the team played. So second in yards, first in touchdowns. The interception's a little high. That's just Matt and Sim, I'd imagine. Definitely top-tier numbers. Melvin Gordon, those are really tough numbers to debate, right? How did he play the season before? Uh, I mean, obviously, that's not real life, so we kind of have to kind of to compare to that actual real life. I mean, that was worse than real life last year, technically. And last year, they were kind of seeing him as, a, you know, kind of like, eh, do we want to re-sign him type of deal? So we'll kind of see. I didn't see his contract, even though I pushed him, you know, pushed his number down to one. Uh, but I, I guess, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, Noah Fan with 99 catches, 1,000 yards. But will he get to Superstar? Start a superstar just doesn't work in Madden for tight end, so we'll see. Receiver's not bad, and obviously Jerry Judy should be an X-Factor. O-line definitely played up to par. Browning should be star development trade. Von Miller back to his old self after being out for a season. Draymond Jones, not bad, actually. Six and a half. Chubb, though, very, very disappointing numbers. Interceptions, two for Johnson. I mean, we really just had no interceptions at all. McManus did pretty well. Uh <laughs> For anyone that isn't subscribed to the channel and watches all the time, well, what are you doing? Like, do that. <laughs> we obviously call him. We know his. We know his name. Okay, we know his real name, but it's it's better. It's more fun that way. As Aaron Rodgers in the same division as Mahomes does not win MVP, but if he was on the uh, you know the NFC side still, he probably would have won something. But here he's just not going to, unfortunately. But still, his team's in the postseason, going up against that team. The Chiefs for the third time this season. Let's see. Can Denver make that pretty risky trade to be a gold mine right out the gate? If they win a Super Bowl, no questions can be asked. I mean, at the end of the day, the main goal is a Super Bowl. Ooh, a snow game. Rodgers should be used to this. If you get to the Super Bowl and you win it, hell, you even just make the Super Bowl. It's a win automatically. Going to the end of the game. Chiefs make quick work of the defense. Ten points already. Start of the second quarter. And the offense has had their chances. They just can't seem to close the deal on some points. And they finally do. They get three only, though. It's still really anyone's game, especially with that touchdown. Finally, Chiefs putting up another touchdown. It's a 17-24 to game. It's pretty close here. And Rodgers runs for nine. And the Denver Broncos have tied the game up. They have the ball as well. They're driving down perfectly. And in a crazy turn of events... Denver wins the game. That is absolutely shocking. I believe it was 24 to 3. No, not 24 to 3 at halftime, but it, they had 24 points for a long, long time. And they do it. The the Broncos come back and win it. Rodgers technically outperforms the homes. Of course, the completion percentage is, you know, a little bit lower for Rodgers. Three touchdowns to one pick. But I like you would expect they did have two rushing touchdowns. We had one, so we did have more touchdowns in general, but you know, kind of similar performance-ish uh, as Von Miller with a sack and a half in the postseason. Massive. And, of course, Tyron Matthew gets a pick. Why wouldn't you expect that? Really, really good game against a very tough team to beat. I really don't want to lose Melvin Gordon. I really don't. But, yeah, I don't know what that contract's going to look like. So, we'll see. The Colts now, another kind of under-the-radar team. They got better in the offseason as well. Carson Wentz, who knows how well he's playing. About to find out. Assuming he is starting, because to be honest, when we do these rebuilds, ever since the Carson Wentz move, which is a while back, I haven't really seen his name much in, you know, like stats, awards, wins for Super Bowls. haven't really seen anything like that. Of course, as I'm saying that, they're smoking us, and they're like, oh, well, you, you see it now, don't you? 24-0. to zero. A Rodgers-led offense is going to put up seven points. That's it? Hello? 14-34, to 34. it's a bit late for that, and I believe Rodgers actually threw a pick there. And, uh, is, okay, there's, okay, they're not going to get an onside kick attempt, okay. Yeah, really good comeback attempt, a little too late. Kind of reminds me of some championship game I, I can recall. Another really bad completion percentage game, which is just not Rodgers' game. But, hey, it's, it's the case. The worst part is they ran the ball really poorly, 
So you would think we would have, you know, forced him into that one-dimensional game, which realistically this this secondary is really, really good. Should be up to the task of a passing attack. But apparently low overall Carson Wentz gets the job done, is going to take his team to the championship round. That's a bit of a yike. So, I mean, it's a win-loss. It's a win. It's a tough spot as a Denver fan, as a Denver, like, you know, GM or, you know, the, the front office, you'd be thinking really strangely about this season. It was a really odd one. It just wasn't a clear cut. And Draymond Jones, apparently, was he a pro bowler? I mean, maybe he was good enough to make the pro bowl. I don't know. The Saints, who have been in the, the Super Bowl so often in our Sims lately, lose to the Colts. The question is, what kind of dev ups do we have? And Jerry Judy is one of them. It gets the X Factor. Max security. Not bad. As far as the defense goes, I do not see a single... Browning didn't get it. Wasn't he defensive rookie of the year and he had like 138 tackles or something? I'm not saying I would put him to superstar in this case, but I definitely would put him to star. So if he was already star, I probably wouldn't have put him to superstar, but he definitely deserves to be star. It's one of those seasons where I think he's locked in at star no matter what. And then, you know, kind of depends on how much of a step he takes forward afterwards to see what he does, you know, going forward we definitely had some regressions, and we obviously have a negotiation to make. Melvin Gordon, 85 overall, a four-year 26. It's tough to really deny what he did for us, but those numbers were pretty average. I'd rather see that to be more like a two-year deal. So if he's down to make this a two-year deal worth like, I don't know, 15, like 15.5, I'm willing to do it. And he does. A two-year 15.5, which is, you know, still a little bit more than he's asking for. I'm willing to do that rather than lock him in for a four. I say that, but I don't remember. How much did I give him for signing? Did I? How much did I actually offer him for signing? That's not bad. I'd rather lower it, though, a little bit. I think that's a little bit more fair. I'm cool with that, though. I, I think even that he might have accepted. Kyle Fuller, definitely lower, which is ironic because we actually offered him similar to that, so... A 5 mil guarantee with, like, that should be good, right? He'd like to play for a new team. We gave him what he wanted. 16.7. He's played under attack before. Callahan's not asking for that much himself, but he doesn't have the longevity in comparison. Alexander Johnson just wants too much money, unfortunately. Same with Tim Patrick, who actually wants more money now, even though he proved less than before. And I, I guess I can kind of see why uh, Denver went for Patrick Sertan. Learned from some pretty damn good corners. Two different style corners, veterans. Uh, and potentially lose them both just because of contract issues. Especially if you get Rodgers. So unfortunately we're down now to Sertan and uh, Darby. Which honestly isn't the worst case. You know, Sertan, Sertan, whatever you want to call him. He's definitely going to be a good number one corner here for us in Madden because he's a superstar, and that's the way I expect him to be in next game. Darby's not a bad number two. And then uh, OJ Moutier, I thought he was going to have more opportunities, but they apparently didn't like him. And, of course, Kerry Vincent can potentially, if he needs to, play that, that Bryce Callahan slot role. But realistically, the number one need for this team has to be the, 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 the defensive line. Uh, we're lacking with no right ends, no DT that I care about. O-line, you know, maybe make the argument, but I think we can actually get rid of... Uh, I think you can get rid of Jawan James in real life, but I think it's fallen behind a little bit. Yeah, I think they'd be willing to get rid of Jawan James. I think the hit would be technically similar to this, actually, so I'm just going to release him straight up. But I believe there was some, like, kind of faulty thing they were able to do in real life. Why did I actually release? Actually, to be fair, with his injury concerns, he probably wouldn't be uh, garnering too much interest in real life anyways. Dalton Reisner, the guy that was drafted to be the do-it-all type of player, uh, will be moving to right tackle for us, allowing the kind of smaller, you know, thicker players on the inside to play on the inside, which definitely does give us a more youthful and higher potential look. So yeah, defensive line is 100% the biggest need on the team. Don't underestimate our need for wide receiver, though. We definitely need a wide receiver. But we probably have a, a tiny bit of money to work with for free agency. So we'll take a look at that and uh, hope for the best. It'd be nice to sign like a, a mid-tier wide receiver here. Could try to get Kyle Fuller back. That actually would be not a bad move. So we might go for Kyle Fuller. Tim Patrick, he wasn't bad, but... 
I don't want to pay him anything near where, what he's asking for. And we get Kyle Fuller back on a $10.5 million deal. I mean, hey, he didn't have any offers. He was close to accepting an offer we already had, so it's only fair. All right, so I was asked uh, for a fifth-year option for Bradley Chubb, and I think this is an example of us doing this as a smart option. I think this is you know one of those examples where you definitely want to do that because you just don't know how he's going to play. Another one of those kind of Cortland Sutton types, up and down can't really tell is he the future is he not so one more year to test it out as he kind of was iffy for us this season all right heads of the draft obviously no first round pick which you know we don't really mind too much we had a pretty rough draft pick for first round anyways uh we seen uh Enrique was mentioned as a kind of like a iffy type of combine performer but he was a guy that was expected to do pretty well uh, this Sheldon guy looks decent for the skills but He's going to be pretty damn slow. I mean, 88 speed, maybe 87 Excel. Like He's looking pretty rough. Ben Clayton uh, looks pretty decent as well. I would say Enrique would be the number one out of those choices. There is also a guy named Matt Woods who is an early first projected, but he's a late second draft pick. So, I, I mean, there's a lot of choices here. It's, it's kind of tough to see what we want. It's always going to be best available pick, especially when uh, the needs just aren't there. I mean, there's a DT we could use, but there really just isn't a single player that I can see that is just clear cut, especially around our draft picks that are just, it's just right, you know? So realistically, we're going to go to the next round and we might just honestly go to our next pick as well. You know, I felt like our offensive line is kind of set, but I want to make one more, you know, get one last look in there. So Glasgow would definitely be a guy that's on the lookout soon enough to be leaving, but he does have a contract that kind of like sticks him with us for a while longer. So, I mean, I don't think center is that big of a need right now. I think wide receiver is the bigger one. So we're going to go to 28 and hopefully one of the choices is still there. And multiple choices there, unfortunately. Kevin Sheldon, early second talent. I think Enrique Drowns is definitely the guy. Is that dr Drones? Drown? I don't know, dude. But he kind of fits that mold as well. We have... Uh, Nah, I guess he doesn't really fit that mold because we don't have a tall receiver anymore. But 6'1", 209, that's a pretty prototypical receiver build. And he is hidden. That's pretty big. Although I will say if he isn't, you know, superstar better, then it probably doesn't matter too much because obviously you'd probably rather have normal if the guy's only star for that XP boost. But that's a win. That's a massive win. He has aggressive catch. Cannot be mad with that at all. I mean, whether or not that was a good pick or not, it was still smart for us to leave tim patrick go so i'm not you know i'm not worried about it that way but you know i was hoping to get somebody worthy and we did henry whitaker might be worth taking where's the dt this is the dt i want so up there wide receiver could still be a need but it's not that big of a need to where we should take anyone anytime soon uh realistically though ooh, our running back's already gone. no he isn't I, I don't know why i thought the running back was gone uh these are kind of our top selections as of right now remaining we don't really need linemen that much, but that guy does look pretty hard to pass. So if he's there at pick 10, we're going to take him. If not, we could trade down from the third and, you know, maybe get some of our value back. Clayton to the Dolphins. Not a bad overall. 71. What was our guys overall? Something around the 70, low 70s, right? And Whitaker goes to the Washington football team. Let's go to our next selection. All right. So Emmett Bass or Bass, whatever you want to call him, is up there for selections. We've got a couple of DTs. Might end up trying to take all of them. Uh, as the rest of these guys, I mean, we didn't have a, uh, a safety pick. There's just, they didn't really look good, honestly. The uh, the class wasn't super strong. I'm going to be honest with you. It just wasn't super great. But we landed that wide receiver, obviously. So it's a bit of a win. Let us go to like the mid fourth, I suppose, and take that DT. We get a fifth round next year from the Steelers. We did move down a little bit more than I wanted to, I will admit. But still, we're going to get there. Real question, is our guy going to be there? That's that's the thing, and I, I really don't know. And he is. So Emmett Bass, I think, is a good selection. He's really strong, so you can always build off that platform. And he is a 71 overall normal. He could definitely start right out the gate. Very good, actually, because look at the speed. He's actually really fast for a, a big, strong fella. Raw, but definitely uh, got potential. Mid-six, this might be a little bit of a reach, but this guy did look like by far the best elusive back in the draft. I'm willing to take him a little early, and he's hidden. 69 overall. This is going to put a little bit of pressure on Melvin Gordon. I will say, though, you know, I mean, we did, did we really need him? I'm not sure, but, I mean, I suppose Melvin Gordon's only on the two years, so, you know, going forward, it's nice to have someone. Early seventh. Oh, our middle linebacker's gone. That is not what I wanted to happen. 
We give Miami a six round next year and our late fifth to move up to five in the fifth. Hicks actually isn't terrible, and he could play safety for us, like free safety, move Simmons over to strong. Uh, but I want Wilkerson more. And another 70 overall DT, similar to what we just drafted, a little bit weaker, though. And we already know Drowns is going to play probably the number two spot off the gate. I mean, he's got hidden, so he's already better than Hamler. Hamler's a bit injury prone as well. And he is star, as you would expect. 81. I don't really like a number 81 for a, a six foot tall guy. I think 15. There's not really a whole lot of wide receiver numbers here, but 15's not terrible. Uh, and even though, uh, you know, it does have some, you know, decision making implications, regardless, he's not going to be the number one running back, even if he's an X factor. So. Uh, and he is only star, so we're going to try to put him at something kind of small for a running back. Man, we have, like, no numbers here, do we? Put him at 41, I guess. Maybe the Chiefs are right after all. Just kidding, I hate the number thing. <laughs> never going to say that. Never going to agree to that. Here's the Heisman winning running back, of course. A hidden development player, as you would expect. If he was actually going to slip all the way down to 28 in the second, I would have absolutely taken him. Will he be X-Factor? Who knows? Probably not. And he is only star, but he's a very good player. Wearing number 27 as a Titan is also kind of filth. And here's Matt Woods, a guy I was going to make a play for. And, you know, I'm going to give him star. I mean, I don't know if I would have given him star if, if we drafted him, but he was an early first projection. He should have went higher than that. He's one of those gems, obviously, 76 overall and everything. And now I am curious about the guys we did pass on. So that's an automatic L if we would have taken him over the guy we did take. And then where was the other guy? was not Chad Killings, wasn't Sheldon all the way down there, 71 overall. Was this the guy that I thought was going to be really, really slow, or was it the other guy? That's not the guy, damn it. I mean, they're both rather slow, but they're not as slow as I would have thought. And then the final selection I was looking at is Henry Whitaker, who uh, would not have been worth the pick anyways. Not a bad draft. Not a, like a great draft by any means, but we drafted a couple of positions we needed, and... Yeah, we got a we got a starting wide receiver at least. All right, season two roster. Obviously, we got younger, but we didn't really get necessarily better for the first season. Obviously, Tim Patrick was like a good seven overalls higher, maybe even a little higher than uh, our youngster. But the potential is through the roof. Twenty one years old, only thirty three hundred XP per upgrade. He's already a really solid player. Melvin Gordon obviously has that two year deal, which I think is actually a pretty good win. What a two year fourteen or something like that. Not bad actually. Very solid player, and actually had a pretty decent season, just didn't get that many carries. We do have a lot of really good running back backups, so I don't know. I'm not really sure what we're going to do there, but no offense. Really haven't heard his name too much. I know he had a 1,000 yards on the nose, but he hasn't really went above and beyond. I was hoping he would get to superstar, but he didn't. O-line, obviously young, but you know, a little worrisome with the overalls. Defensively, we need a new middle linebacker for a fact. D-line, yes, we got younger. We got potential players. You know, Maybe they get some breakouts, but... Yeah, I mean, defense definitely took a hit. Did not get better at all. We regressed hard. And Kareem Jackson was a guy that had planned to get rid of. We just couldn't because there's just no one to get rid of. You know, there's no one to replace him. <laughs> Lol, friends and family. Lol. To be fair, I guess he kind of has family now. <laughs> you don't like your family? Get a new one. The Aaron Rodgers special. I'm sorry. It's, I, I really don't care. <laughs> I just, it's funny to me. Von Miller, 93 overall. I mean, this is a tag if I've ever seen one. Kyle Fuller, that's not a terrible contract. Look to play him at safety if he regresses really hard, especially in the athletic department. Kareem's gone pretty much physically and, like, you know, contractually. Malik Reed, not a bad little backup here. Uh, not a bad situation for the uh, the Broncos to have him in real life either. Overall, maybe Malik Reed gets a contract, Von Miller gets the tag, and we'll have money left over. I'm going to be honest, it's a bit of an oof season as we go 6-10. and ten. With the bad man Rodgers at uh, at starting quarterback, I will admit, I don't know how well he's played, but if it's not up to Rodgers' standards, this would be a very bad seasonal thing. Oh my, what is with the picks? 23 interceptions, it's got to be among the most in the league. Melvin Gordon really hasn't played up to his, uh, you know, the, the two-year Noah fan. Pretty similar season, can't blame him. The, I mean, the receivers were really solid, so... I'm not sure exactly what happened with Rodgers. The blocking looks really good. Is Rodgers just not the guy? Chubb, that extra year looked pretty good to me. I don't know. I think we got to sign him. McManus. You get McManus when you go 33 or 30, 23 for 23. I don't care what anyone says. Rodgers, though, 
I'm not going to be defending that. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure, he had a lot of yards, decent touchdowns. I'm not going to be defending the uh, the regression, right? I don't know what his ranking was for quarterback. It was number eight. I, whatever his regression is, I can't defend it this season, buddy. I'm sorry. Too many interceptions. Probably costed us a couple of games and just not up to the Rodgers standard at all. As the Browns win the bowl, let's take a look at if any dev ups had happened. And Browns really doesn't go up to superstar. That's a little rough. Uh, Rodgers doesn't really drop too far from 99. Goes down four overalls. Chubb, I can't wait to re-sign a superstar outside linebacker. Now, Bass, the uh, rookie of the year, actually, goes the star. That's a pretty big win. Vaughn doesn't drop too hard, thankfully. And Fuller does not go up in dev. This is, you know, can, kind of situation where maybe you put him at safety, but he's still good enough to play corner. So it really comes down to what is in free agency, what we end up doing in the offseason in general. But obviously, first things first, we got to get Von Miller back on the squad. A two-year 30, I'm willing to do. I'm willing to do a two-year 33. And that's why I was willing to do it. Because look at the tag. I don't know if he knew that was going to happen or not, but I would imagine we probably would have had to give him like 20 per. Maybe should have got a little less stingy. It is what it is. I'll take the contract. Yeah, I'm not really mad with the way we got him back. Can we get some money back if we got rid of Glasgow? I feel like we probably could have gotten more back by now if it was real life. Melvin Gordon, that's pretty much guaranteed. Sertan, probably, uh, really, already? Oh, it's supposed to be a four-year. We only get him three-year in Madden, so let's slap a four. Yo, we're actually going to slap a five onto him because uh, he would have the fifth-year option that we can't obviously give him because, you know, he's technically not a rookie in EA's eyes here for us. What about Darby? Is that contract? Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of these contracts. I mean, they're not bad contracts. We're not stuck by any means, but... Yeah, just, just testing the waters. We can get some better overalls if we could actually release some players, but we can't. As best case scenario for offense, I really don't think there's anything you can do to make the offense too much better defensively. Right end for sure. Middle linebacker number two. Safety or corner, maybe both. And then look for an outside linebacker to play pass rush because you may lose, honestly, both of your edge. And Wyatt Teller, that's a tough man to pass on. Roquan's asking for too much, and he would probably get more than that in real life. So, I mean, there's some decent names here, but this is kind of tough. I might go for Akeem Hicks here. A two-year, maybe like 14. All right, not a crazy great uh, free agent start, but not terrible. We fill a strong safety position, and we get a young wide receiver backup who has star. He is 25, but still, not bad. We got a bunch of backups. Luvu, we got uh, Baker, who actually isn't really a backup. He might even be the number one on the team. Voshan Joseph and Hunter Bryant as backups. Of course, we do have a couple of decent looking prospects, but nothing too insane. Maybe not even anyone that's looking to start this season even. All right, there was a really solid looking lineman uh, named Micah Green. They talked about that he was moving up the boards and they said that he may even be the best lineman in the class. I mean, I can kind of see it. I don't think he's the best, but they're mentioning him. You don't really get offensive lineman chances too often, so I suppose that's probably going to be our selection. Of course, there is a pass rusher. Maybe use this guy to replace Von Miller, but there's a lot of other pass rushers as well. You have Kirk Greenfield, who we just unfortunately do not need anymore. So we're going to be moving on to pick five in the second round. So, of course, uh, the Packers get a very, very high selection this year. So definitely making up for it after last season's, you know, not super great pick for them as this seems like a pretty clear-cut selection, especially when our other corner is gone, Mr. Micah Green. And I was going to say before we took him that if he isn't hidden, we are going to force the dev. I mean, if even the linemen that are talked about in a good way in the news uh, articles aren't guaranteed hidden, then like, how do you even draft linemen? You, you just don't. We move on to our third-round selection now, where we are likely going to be taking a pass rusher, speaking of... We do have a lot of DTs as well that look pretty damn decent, but I really don't know who to take outside of these pass rushers. I feel like we should grab one of these guys. Six foot one versus six foot three. This guy looks better. He's a mid fourth. We could probably move down a little bit later in the third year. I mean, we didn't move down like crazy amounts, but we're going to take Kirk Wheeler. Six, four, four, three, six, four, three, six, four, six, four. Uh, four six one seven one seven. I mean, Wheeler is a little bit sm uh, slower, but he is built more for the outside. So, Kirk Wheeler, big hitter. You know, he's, he's kind of yeah. 
Now, hopefully we have some DTs here, which appears we do. Uh, Jalen Snell actually looks pretty good, too, early fifth. Uh, we have so many DTs here, like so many. And by so many, I mean clearly not that many at all. We have some seventh-round DTs as well that look pretty damn good. This guy's probably one of the... Oh, this is actually the guy they... No, it isn't the guy they mentioned. Carmichael was the other guy. Uh, Mid-first, though, I mean... Realistically here, early fifth, why not go for another one? Jalen Snell, 71 overall, and this guy is the guy that's built better for an outside linebacker, in my opinion. And by my opinion, I mean fact that you cannot argue with. How the hell, middle of the fifth, are all of our players gone? Did I make a mistake here? No? Okay, I'm sure. I guess we'll take Bryce Madden. But how? How? There were, there were mid-sevenths. Two rounds early. Oh, what a disaster. I know we clearly need more uh, running back, so I'm going to take Eric Arnaud. And he is a pretty damn good running back. I mean, you got a guy like that, you got to take him. And we're going to take a third round left tackle, Kirk Daniels. He's a bust, but, you know, third round projected falls all the way here. Might as well take a chance. And we're going to do it again with Dwayne Boss, who has the same bench press reps, but is three strength lower. Huh? Okay. Okay. So, of course, Mr. Micah Green is the guy that will be forcing to star. Realistically, you could have made the argument that Superstar would have been fair, but I'm not going to make that argument. So, start of element trade for Micah Green. And I don't know if there's really anyone we necessarily passed on. I think this was uh, one of the more, you know, expected first-round beasts. That guy, I don't think, was was one of them. Hidden development trait. Really raw, though, obviously. Here's him in a linebacker we were going to take. Ooh, he was hidden, though. Uh, that's not good. I mean, it doesn't really matter. We got Baker. Can't take the chances. And we would have had a superstar middle linebacker. Sweet. Also, which one was the outside linebacker? Was it, it could have been that guy. It could have been this guy. If it was, I don't think it was, though. What about pick five? What did Green Bay take? Or pick, yeah, pick five. Nate Whiteside, they get a uh, kind of like a, a dual threat interior guy wearing number 92. Oh, Lord. A dual threat edge rusher that they're probably going to play on the interior because they're in a 3-4 and he's star. Not bad. All right, year three. I'm going to be honest with you. The team really doesn't seem like it's improving like at all. The sliders are on proper and, and everything. And I mean, it's year three, and I feel like we just haven't really moved up. Of course, Judy's a pretty decent wide receiver. Drowns went up about eight overalls in the first season. No offense, an 88 overall now. thing is, Rogers down to a 95, and... We're not going to fix his regression if he sucks again. So, uh, you know, this is a very big year for him. Because uh, if he sucks, he might be unusable after this season. As far as linebackers go, we definitely improve, uh, you know, everywhere but Von Miller. You know, Chubb goes up in overall, goes up in dev. Baker is a massive upgrade over our number two. Technically moves up to number one with Brownie at number two now. Um, we did have Draymond Jones, I believe, also go to star. He did go to star. So, I mean, that's nice, but... At 25 years old, it's like 8,500 XP per upgrade. We got a new safety. I mean, the team's not really necessarily better, but, I mean, at least it didn't really get too much worse. I haven't seen a breakout literally in three seasons. Well, this is the start of the third season, and guess who gets it? Terrell Edmonds, the breakout master. All right, Von Miller wants another contract. We're going to leave that for now. Might be another tag situation. Noah Fance definitely has played pretty damn well for us on the up and up. Uh, Bradley Chubb, I think, is the future of the edge around here. He had a better season than Vaughn last season. I would assume he's going to continue to get better. Fuller has actually done a really damn good job. So we'll kind of see, you know, how he plays. Maybe he plays safety. I'm not sure. But Dalton Reisner, obviously, uh, a lineman for us for the near future. Give him a five-year 40, which works out for both sides. Of course, we did get Shelby Harris back. Will he, you know, see any, any further than that? I'm not sure. Javante Williams. Probably be about 23 here in real life instead of 22, but going to give him the four-year $16 million deal, and he probably will look to start next season. Draymond Jones, the overall is not super great, so yeah, I'll still give him a three-year. Three-year 20 works out for us. Uh, and then this Walters guy was actually a hidden gem that the game signed in free agency. Might as well give him a little bit of a, you know, a couple years. Gary Vincent really never had a chance, unfortunately, with us, so we're probably going to let him go. Sam Martin, if he's still okay... I'm willing to keep him because that uh, that kick accuracy or the power is really good, obviously. And here we are, heads to the playoffs. Can we sneak in? We cannot as we go 7-9. and nine. I really do not know. Well, I can't really say I don't know what's going on because, honestly, the team isn't really that good. But 
it's a tough dynamic because it's like, how do you get better if you don't win games that maybe you should win? You know, Rodgers here, not bad. 16 interceptions is nothing crazy. 36 touchdowns, 4,200 yards. It's definitely good enough to avoid regression as well, in my opinion, as Melvin Gordon had an okay season, believe it or not. Drowns should be superstar. Judy, I mean, not bad. Fant definitely his worst season, unfortunately, though. And O-line, I mean, they played pretty well. Again, if, if we're just to look at the sacks allowed number, which is really all we get. Uh, Chubb kind of fell down a bit here, but Von Miller has a good year. So one would assume get get Chubb going next season, I guess. I don't know. McManus, though, kind of a sell, missing six of his 19 kicks. Justin Fields with his, is that his second MVP potentially? Uh, let's take a look at these awards. So uh, Rodgers up to number five for best quarterback, which is, you know, not bad, I suppose. Definitely better than they would have had it. Uh, if they didn't trade for him. So it's, it's kind of a 50-50 at this point. And I do believe we do actually have our own first round for one. So, you know, maybe this is the year. Who knows? As the MVP of the league taking his Chicago Bears to the Super Bowl and winning it. As you look at the DevOps, uh, Mr. Drowns does get to Superstar here, which is pretty big. He's an 86 overall now with Route Tech and Short Out of League, which is actually pretty damn OP. And then defensively, uh, Edmonds... Goes from normal to superstar with us. Of course he does. Why Why wouldn't he? Unfortunately, Fuller doesn't dev up, but he's still pretty damn good, and I think I might give him another year. This man is, he's insane. Obviously, he's not going to be the number one anymore, but oh my, like, he is just a freak. And ironically enough, I would say ironically, but uh, Von Miller was there, and then he wasn't, unfortunately. So yeah, that kind of sucks. For a guy like Fuller, I'm going to give him an $11 million deal. I think... Actually, I'll give him 12 If he doesn't sign, this is hilarious. Okay, we gave him a lot more than he was probably worth, like, technically. But if we wanted to keep him, the tag would have been, like, 16 17 mil, and he's already had a tag. So, you know, play it fair. Ronald Darby, we just don't need. Melvin Gordon, it's not unfair money. But I think we have enough talent on the team, especially re-signing Javante Williams. Give him a chance. Give it a go. New back couple of new players and you know we have a little bit of money to work with to potentially add a couple more uh, as far as Rogers performance goes I think we're gonna fix him up to be a 93 overall I think that's probably fair he still had a really good season all things considered especially as a 40 year old you know if Tom Brady wasn't doing the thing you'd be thinking wow that's insane but, you know Tom Brady's kind of set the standard if you if you couldn't have tell uh, couldn't tell a guy like uh, Brady has really set the standard in the league, which has really made the argument for for you know Super Bowl wins and and how long you can play and all this very hard to gauge because someone thinks that two Super Bowl wins or one Super Bowl win or three Super Bowl wins is nothing when one Super Bowl win alone is really hard to win. So you know it's 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 a dynamic thing. But forty three million to work with. Cream Hunt, sure, would be a great signing, but, you know, we just don't need him. Sean Murphy bunting. This is why I, I kind of wish we didn't have Kyle Fuller now, but uh, it's a little too late for that. Jamar Chase, I just don't see him being a free agent, and even if he was in real life, I just don't see the reason for us to go for him. Matthew Ioannidis, that is a contract I need because the interior of our line has just been brutal. Holcomb, we just don't need. We could use a pass rusher on the edge, though. Obviously, Holcomb isn't that uh, Sean Murphy bunting. He is a very young player. And man, does it make it really hard. I really wish I didn't go for damn Fuller, but... I mean, we did, so there's not really much we can do now. Jamel Dean as well. Oh, my. All right, so we actually went for the quote-unquote cheaper option. We went for Jamel Dean, a three-year $30 million deal, which is pretty fair, actually. Replace Kyle Fuller after this season. Still will play in the, actually, maybe number two, and then Fuller goes down to number three. We get Matt Hack to replace Sam Martin. It was like a two-year seven, and then Judon was a one-year five. Always a great uh, veteran to have if you need a pass rush presence, which with Von Miller gone, we obviously do. All right, we have pick 14. There's a couple of pass rushers. The guy I really want is an early first, so he's unlikely to be there. But Mr. Carlos Minter, he looks absolutely insane. And I imagine he's going to be a freak. We also have Troy Bradfield. And then we also have Tavares Bowers. Bowers is probably the second best here. But, you know, the drill, we don't know who is the best we don't know when they're going to go, so you got to keep going until one is left. And, of course, that's probably not going to last super long here. It may even be you know, a couple more moments. 
as it could be not still going which is nice and there he goes so washington who probably doesn't need the pass rusher but tampa probably does uh is the team we're going to be going to about 14 and 78 to move up to pick nine with washington which will most likely be yeah that wide receiver looks really good but it will most likely be Tavares bowers we also do have a cornerback dimitri perry we also have owen grants who would be really solid on the defensive line uh, but, of course, Tavares Bowers is the immediate need, and that's who we're going to be taking. 76 overall, normal, very, very good, high potential, and will already be the day one starter. Both the players are still there, I believe. Well, I mean, Owen Grant is by far the bigger need, but if we're going to make any trade up at this point, we got to go for, uh, wait, 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 hello. We got to go for, uh, you know, last second trade if we can and the Giants, we can we can pull this off, I feel. I mean, you're filling really, really important needs on the team. D-line probably isn't as important necessarily right now, but still, I mean, it's probably worth making the trade, right? We trade 46, this, 69, and 101 next for pick 22, uh, which will have to be used on that pass rusher without a doubt. Well, the interior guy, whatever you want to call him. There are some really other good, you know, some good players as well. You have Gabriel McKay. Uh, Josh Iglesias, but we just don't... I mean, Josh Iglesias is insane. Don't get me wrong. He looks insane. But we just don't need those positions. So I'm willing to just pay, uh, you know, what we paid to get someone like Owen Grant, who just looks like a manimal. And he is a 77 overall, supposed to be number one in true talent. Of course, we will buff that strength because how can you be an 87 power move guy with 275 pounds and a six foot five frame and yet you're not strong. How? Yay. Play. Explain that, please. Thank you. Normal devs, but really good players. So you can't really be too mad about it. Now for our fourth round pick, Eric Steffens looks pretty decent. So we're going to take a risk on him. 69 overall. Aggressive catch. Not a bad player. Actually better than I would have thought, honestly. Especially in the excel and agility department. I think the 40 time kind of saved both. Rather than him having one really good out of the two, he kind of like evened out. And then you also have this insane looking DT. He's 23, but obviously worth taking. But I think right now we're just going to trade down a bit. Trade it a lot to get up. Trade some, you know, get get some back. Although I will say last time we got cucked out. So I'm actually going to take Juan Boykin now. And he's 72 overall normal. Normal sucks, but yeah, he's probably worth the pick in the fifth round. And now we're really starting to get down to the nitty gritty. This running back actually looks great. I'm going to take him. Marcus Wilson. A little bit, you know, I mean, I would expect the slowerness, you know, with the Excel and agility drills. Uh, trucking's really good, though. Very solid player. We have a Javante Williams, even though he's slower, to back up Javante Williams. <laughs> Basically. I don't know when McManus needs a contract, so we're going to go with Teddy McCain as the backup kicker. Of course, we're going to put him up in kick power if I remember to do so. And we have a couple more picks that we uh, will probably make a selection of. Where's our fullback? Joe Gilmore, need a fullback for the future. We'll take Joe Gilmore, and okay. And for our final move, we ended up taking a sixth round next year from the Bears. Of course, with Owen Grant, I don't really care. I mean, obviously, it sucks to have those devs, but I'm not really too worried about the devs necessarily, but uh, yeah, that strength needs to go up. That is laughably bad. Laughably bad. 87 strength is fair. Let's take a look at some of the other guys that we obviously missed. Minter, we were never getting to pick two. Obviously, he's looking pretty damn solid. Look at the traits. Oh my, it seems like he could play both styles as well. I didn't see the coverage, but looked pretty good at first look. Star Dev only, surprisingly, actually. And then for the Eagles guy, I mean, if I had the choice between the two, I know this guy is hidden. I would have still taken the guy we had. Our guy just looked like he had more potential. Let's take a look at the Dev. If it's not higher than Star, I'll still uh, prefer our guy, and I do. Where was normal? The Buccaneer, the Falcons quarterback, was hidden super fast i'm actually really curious to see this guy now <laughs> number 14 91 speed white quarterback with star interesting and then you have perry who is also normal iglesias was this the six safety i think it was looks absolutely insane to the lions who really need a safety ironically enough and they have he has a star dev really good player and i believe the final other player we would have had was mckay who looked really solid definitely not as great here though as the final product or finished product and speaking of final finished product, we're, I mean, we're kind of getting there ourselves here as we're entering year four 
and we really haven't seen an improvement. And here we are for season four. You guys know the drill. We do five seasons. I mean, of course, if we win here, we will be done, and we won't go for a fifth. But I'm going to be honest with you, the way we have played... Uh, you know, uh, I'm just going to be transparent here and say that I expect a Season 5. Of course, not, not a bad upgrade there at all for Mr. Drowns, the deep route uh, expert, apparently. How is Jerry Judy developing? Obviously, he's a very high overall, deep and medium shorts, kind of iffy. Let's take a look at Rogers, the man. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> of course, Devontae Williams, the new running back, who actually put up some of the best backup numbers I've seen in sim, typically the backup running back, no matter who it is, is going to put up about 3.4, 3.5 yards uh, per carry at max. And I seen him get a, like, what, a 3.9, maybe two 3.9s, if I'm not mistaken? 3.6, 3.6, 3.9. That is that is above average yards per carry numbers. I've seen so much worse than that on average. And then as far as defensively goes, we did get Jamel Dean. But once again, these these moves aren't really big upgrading moves, right? Like, yeah, sure, Matthew Ioannidis is a decent upgrade. Probably the best defensive lineman we've had here for a long time. But we lose Von Miller to retirement. And now we have Bowers, who has a lot of potential. But potential doesn't really matter right now. Because obviously, he still needs to get dev. He still needs to upgrade. Definitely high potential. And I like the way the team is gone. But overall, I mean, there's... There's still potentially ways to go if you want to consider the fact that the other seasons were failures, even though we had a, a very good roster. But, you know, once again, we didn't really upgrade too much. So, realistically, I don't know how we're going to see much of a change. And I've changed the play amongst ever since we failed every single season, which is a lot of failures since we've we failed a few times. I say every single season, but it's it's been two now. Speaking of bye week, uh, I feel like we may have to re-sign this man here, No. Right? I think so. Jerry Judy, and he is... A one-year deal seems fair, but if he doesn't play well, you know, I don't, I don't know if we're going to re-sign him. But first things first, obviously, Jerry Judy is uh, one of the guys at wide receiver that you want to keep for a long time. So a seven-year 165, which is insane, but fair with the latest market prices. Uh, seven-year 46 for Browning is a massive win. Uh, minors, I suppose, will give him a five-year deal. Probably worth the whole, you know, long-term deal, but whatever. We're just not get ourselves locked in for life. KJ Hamler, that's actually not a bad deal. And I think, I mean, that's pretty good money for a pretty solid slot receiver, right? 33 for 13 is not bad. Uh, obviously, we're going to sign this man, so we'll actually get that done right away. And we'll lose some other actually pretty decent role players. But overall, we're re-signing the guys that we need to keep. And as of right now, Rodgers is pretty much... Pretty close to MVP uh, like projection or trajectory. So we're getting him the one year $34 million. I feel like with the way at least, obviously things change. You know, the, the four year he signed, if you look back at it now, he'd be kicking himself thinking he should have gotten more. And then here, I don't know, maybe he sees that he's old. Maybe he doesn't, maybe, you know, I feel like a guy that's kind of proven himself and still thinks he can play probably would get the two-year, you know, like Tom Brady got the two-year. And that's the way I would roll if I was getting, if I was moving to a new team uh, or I was signing some like kind of risky contract for myself, I'm asking for a two-year, right? I'm just saying, at minimum. And one last look at the free agents, unfortunately, Kyle Fuller, I think that's the, I think this is his last ride. So hopefully we can make this a special one for him. And some of the other guys, not bad players, but once again, just we got to get rid of some players. We're not, you know, the most rich team in the world. We're pretty broke here. But broke or not, we're back in the mix, and Rodgers gets to win against his old team. I didn't actually pay attention if they had a, if he had a chance before then. Mathematically, I think considering opposite conference, that might have been the first time he actually got to play them. Of course, a little bit of a slide there, unfortunately, but... Still, obviously, good enough to hold that playoff spot at 12-4. and four. We had that three-game long losing streak. I was like, oh, the Jets and the Patriots. This is going to be a bad season. Uh, actually, it wasn't a losing streak. We just lost one. Okay, fair enough. It felt like we had two or three losses there, but I guess not. Uh, that slide worried me a bit. And Rodgers, he obviously did finish very well still, and I would be willing to you know, negate any crazy regressions. I think like 91, 92 overall still fair. Uh, he was like 2,000 yards, 16 touchdowns, a one pick. Uh, with seven games through. So, you know, on par, if not if a little bit better. And Javante Williams. I mean, that's better than Melvin Gordon's seasons, if I'm not mistaken. Even if it isn't, it's still really, really good. I think it is better, though. Uh, Drowns and Jerry Judy, a very good dynamic duo. Fant, I mean, for a number one tight end, it's, you can't ask for much better than that. It's got to be top five numbers. Uh, Hamler, once again, a 3-13. to 13. 
totally fair in my opinion. O-line, pretty good stuff. But Bowles kind of regressed a little bit in that game. Maybe he's actually physically regressing. I don't know. Uh, seven and a half from Chubb, which considering Bowers, the rookie, gets six when I've never really seen rookies ever do well for us. That's pretty impressive. And then McManus with himself a kicker of the year award, potentially. It's pretty good. 21 out of 23 is is pretty impressive to me. Rodgers obviously had a pretty damn good year. We got defensive rookie of the year, and then if one of the teams ahead of them, which I, they might all be in the postseason, if one of those teams makes a Super Bowl, he make himself back to the Pro Bowl, obviously. Uh, as far as the other positions go, you know, Javante Williams at number five. That's not bad at all. That's pretty impressive. Uh, our wide receivers, surprisingly, I guess maybe not surprisingly because the touchdowns, number eight is the highest. I thought maybe we had two in the top five, honestly. As far as O-line goes, no one doesn't really surprise. I mean, anyone can't really say it doesn't surprise no one. Uh, as far as linebacker goes, no. DB, number four, number six. And then kicker at number four. Not bad. Not bad. Definitely a decent season. Do we have the chance to make the Super Bowl win it? Probably. Will we? Probably not. <laughs> but who knows? Who knows? 87 overall for both sides. It is a divisional matchup. I think we split with them. I can't remember, though. No, we won both games. So, you know, winning both games, it's like, okay, well, if they did it twice, why not a third? I don't know the, the odds on winning three being very high. So, uh... I think, honestly, the odds are against us in this one. But ultimately, it doesn't matter the odds about what happens. So we'll find out what the story is here. 10 to, th ooh, 10 to 14, 17 to 14, 21 to 17. Pre-half had a little bit of a run, but it was nothing. We took the ball away, made it a touchdown, made a count. 24 all to start the fourth. Their ball. Defense cannot hold them. Come on, defense. They gave up a touchdown. Offense clutches up on third down. Offense has nothing to show for, and that could be it. That very well could be it. Defense says, no, you get one more try. You can do it, offense, and they do. Five minutes left. The Chargers kit stopped. And what is this clock management? What is this clock management, honestly? Seven seconds left with three time or two timeouts, which is just hilarious in itself, and you're going to go for the Hail Mary. I mean, I'm not a mathematical expert, but, like, you just do one of those and, you know, you got yourself a field goal shot. A 50-yard field goal is much better than a Hail Mary. Well, I guess it is Rodgers, but let's see it. Can he hit it? He does. Shocker. Yes, we kind of helped, but at the same time, EA needs a little nudge. And by a little nudge, I mean they need a full kick off the ledge because they need some help. Uh, as far as rushing goes, you know, Javante played his role. You know, he did well. Kept the yards per carry high. That's what we want. Receiving. A lot of guys getting involved. That's what I like to see. Defensively. Sack totals two and a half for Ioannidis. And Brownie had the other half. No other sacks, though. Jamel Dean, other another new free agent or new player through free agency coming alive. As Rodgers, once again in the postseason, just struggles as much as, you know, the Packers, man, I don't want to say that's not super true, but, you know. And now a team that we actually lost to not so far ago or long ago, the Cincinnati Bengals, 89 overall to our 88 overall team. Considering we missed, like, what, two seasons of the postseason with kind of an aging roster, to be, like, right up there with a Bengals team that's actually up and coming and young, to be up there with their overalls, pretty impressive. So overall, I'm not too mad. The worst part is, if you look at this team and the two teams ahead, if we have to face them, hopefully we do, uh, we actually lost to all of them. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if this is a good or a bad thing, but, you know, it's it's something. It's something we have to deal with. So, you know, it could go either way. You could make the argument of, uh, well, you know, there's a good chance they split, or, well, they beat us once, so clearly they were better than us one time, so why not again? But here, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty promising as we're going to win 34-16. to 16. Aaron Rodgers, 24 for 31, 77% completion percentage, four touchdowns. Javante Williams, <laughs> not a great performance there. Noah Fan has been really good in the postseason. Hell, all the receivers have been pretty good in the postseason, to be honest. Ioannidis, very solid stuff, though. He's been playing really well. Diggs' face there was like my face if if Rodgers actually leaves and wins a Super Bowl. <laughs> Oh, man. And it's the Patriots, I suppose, name, association, and Cam Newton alone. You probably don't want to see this matchup. Of course, Cam Newton looked like he was, was he an X-Factor? All right, going to the end of the game. Come on, Denver. 
Don't let Rodgers lose four straight championships. I don't care if it's the AFC side, NFC side, it still counts, right? Championships, a championship game, 20 to 10. Sweet. And we don't get all. Oh. <laughs> I mean, yay, 17 to 20. Oh, 24 to 20. I'll take it. 27 to 24. Oh, my Lord, this is too much pressure. Slow it down for me, baby. Okay, well, okay, okay. I mean, offense got a chance. It seems very 50-50, but we're up by four. And by we, I mean rebuild team. And we're headed to the bowl of soup. I love it. What's your favorite type of soup, boys? I feel like uh, you got to go classic chicken noodle, right? I mean, I'm just going to be honest with you. Maybe chicken dumpling. It kind of depends, though. You know, it's 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 a tough one. It's not really a tough one. Pretty much anything with chicken, and I'm I'm gonna be pretty happy with. Here we are headed to the Super Bowl against the Falcons. It can't just be coincidence. The Patriots, then the Falcons, right? It just can't be coincidence. As dev up wise, Williams doesn't go to superstars. A little surprise, a little bit, not crazy, but a little bit. And then defensively, I don't see a single dev up. So we didn't get a single dev up on either sides of the ball. Nice. Let's go against those Falcons, though. 88 again for both teams. And Julio's still an Atlanta Falcon. All right. I don't even know who their quarterback is. I think it's like Max Bryan, it said, or Byron. One of the two. It said something about a Brian Byron. I don't know. But, like, it's not even Matt Ryan. Please just let us win. Right? Like, they, I mean, we have real players that people know and love. We're not letting down any CPU fans, right? I, I would imagine... As uh, we're up by 12 and we win the Super Bowl, Aaron Rodgers is holding another Lombardi, which is just probably not going to happen in real life no matter where he goes. I'm just going to be honest. It's just he's doomed to win one. And I'm going to be honest, I think it's because of his ego. It's it's the only reason why. Clearly, that's the that's why, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, the Denver Broncos are on top of the world. I'm going to be honest. I've said that a few times, that phrase. I will try to not say it anymore. After that first year, I was looking like, hey, you know, maybe not a great decision for Denver. But it worked out. Obviously, they got to the Super Bowl. Will that happen in real life if they don't go for Rodgers? I have no idea. They are building a decent roster there, but the quarterback position is the most important and the toughest position to fill. And Denver's not really doing a great job of it since Peyton Manning, really, to be honest. <laughs> Stop! Please! Sell the phrase! Delete it! That's got to be a t-shirt at some point, right? <laughs> uh, but obviously, a Super Bowl win for Denver. Not completely won by the defense. So that's a nice little surprise, isn't it, Denver fans? Uh, obviously here, Rodgers. Wonder if he actually will retire. I don't think so. But if you're him, maybe. I mean, you did have, you did pay that money or you took that contract, so... Yeah, I, I you give another go, right? Obviously not for us. Uh, let's be honest. It's gonna freaking hell, dude. It's gonna be like a six and ten season. Uh, obviously Rogers outperformed this Byron guy by a ton. He is a rookie though. He almost won a Super Bowl as a rookie. That would have been super great for Rogers' ego. Running backs, Ronald Jones, not a worst fit actually for uh, Atlanta. Does uh, pretty poorly. <laughs> pretty poorly. Not great at all. Sack totals, nothing special. Terrell Edmonds got a pick. And then McManus missing a freaking field goal, dude. It's the biggest stage. Luckily, we didn't need it, but still, not happy by that. But ultimately, we have done the deed. Rodgers has won another Super Bowl. And let's see if he actually retired. I don't think he would have. He did. Okay. Rodgers retires. That's something. <laughs> Obviously, retires on top. Broncos fans wouldn't be mad. Uh, the Broncos brass shouldn't be mad. You got your value back. Green Bay kind of got their value back as well. Did they make it to the Super Bowl? I don't think they did. Did they? I can't remember. But uh, obviously, one of the picks was like a top five pick, I believe. Pick four it was. So obviously, if if Green Bay finds any sort of top four pick scenario for Rodgers, especially when it's involving players and another first-round pick... You can't really blame them, especially considering the rift that is uh, between them two, you know, two uh, sides, I suppose. Regardless, the big thing for me that I would like from you is to let me know in the comment section below, what do you think is going to happen with this whole thing? It's really at this point, if I'm trying to think about it, besides Julio Jones, it's the only real NFL, I wouldn't say storyline, but talking point at this point, right? Like there's nothing else to talk about. It's it's Rodgers and Julio Julio is more likely to be dealt, especially when he says, I'm out of there. It's a little different from Rodgers saying, I don't want to play there. 
And I think there was one time he was like, if they get rid of Gudakuns, I'm not going to be back. Julio's just straight up, I'm out of that joint, you know? So I don't really see how he could return, right? That seems a little strange. But what do you think about the trade evaluation? What do you think of the rebuild in general? What do you think Rodgers is worth? And other than what I said, the second most important thing is to let me know in the comment section below what you would like to see next from a rebuild as uh, we're kind of running out of ideas. I know like some people are like, oh, do the Titans post draft. I mean, yes, there's I could do Ravens post draft, Titans post draft, but there's no real big storyline, you know, teams. There's nothing crazy that I think we've missed other than have we done a full Falcons Kyle Pitts rebuild? I know we did a speed rebuild that went pretty well, but there's not really any of those crazy wild card teams anymore, right? Teams that took a quarterback. You know, we did the Davis Mills. We did uh, Kellen Mond. We did all those. So I'm not really even sure if there's any more rebuilds to do unless we do special ones, maybe speculation ones or whenever Julio actually is traded. Maybe we do one of those just for the for the re- recency or the relevancy uh, clicks. I'm not 100% sure. But thanks for watching regardless. If you guys enjoy rebuilds and franchise, you'll see a lot of that from me this year next Madden for the foreseeable future, and uh, maybe follow me on Twitter, drop a care, second channel, be care, please, twitch.tv, uh, I'm tired, okay, twitch.tv slash drop care for streams, uh, I really am tired, actually, uh, I, I kind of sold on this one a little bit, left it a little late, I'm literally going to re- uh, export all this, edit it, and then start the render and go to sleep, that's how like close I am to sleeping, I should have slept like an hour ago, so I apologize for the for the stuttering and all the mistakes, okay, it doesn't usually happen, that's a lie, that's 100% a lie, <laughs> but it's talking about streams, likely a stream tonight about 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'm trying to think of when like the Logan Paul thing would go on, I'm not saying I necessarily want to watch it, or I will, but I know some people will, so I don't want to like try to compete with a huge event. So we'll see. We'll definitely see. It'll be in the community tab regardless if I am not or I am. I don't know. Something should be there regardless. Long, confusing outro over the Broncos' realistic rebuild with a potential Rodgers fantasy trade completed with the win, with the Super Bowl win. Not bad at all. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys come back for next video. But until next video, what a disaster. See ya! Oh, watch out for my... Yo, don't get on that. Disaster strucken. Stricken. Where's the snipers? Where? They're everywhere. Ah! Zombies!